One of the things you get taught in intro neuro, if you've taken it any time in the last 5,000 years, is when you've got an adult brain, it doesn't make any more neurons. You've got all the neurons you're ever going to get by the time you're three years old, and all you can do thereafter is squander them away on like stupid weekend binges or whatever. And it turns out that nonetheless, this is not true. And arguably, this is the biggest revolution in neuroscience in the last decade or so, adult neurogenesis. And it turns out this adult neurogenesis happens in only two areas in the brain. The first one is really interesting because it's this part of the brain called the hippocampus. Hippocampus, learning, memory, it's totally cool. And a gazillion studies now showing stuff like you learn a new fact. You stimulate neurogenesis in your hippocampus. You get put in an enriched environment. You exercise. You do all sorts of stuff. You make new neurons there. You get stressed, you make less new neurons there. This whole new field, and 99% of the studies have been about these populations of neural stem cells in the hippocampus. Totally ignored has been the second little pocket of these neural stem cells that can make new neurons. Nobody's interested in it. What's this about? It's totally boring. Where's the second pocket just behind the olfactory bulb? And what this study showed, and this is one in your reader, just at the abstract, what it showed was if you have a rat, right around the time she gets pregnant, she starts making new neurons out the wazoo, not from the exciting hippocampal pocket, but from this boring little olfactory end. What goes on with the onset of pregnancy? Female rodents do this massive renovation job of all their olfactory neurons going on there. What it is, they showed in the study, it is driven by the prolactin levels that rise during pregnancy. And what have you got there? What they showed was right around the time she gives birth, she's got this spanking new, completely renovated olfactory system just in time to do one of the most important olfactory things of her life, which is quickly figure out which ones are her babies, to quickly do the social bonding to them. What hasn't been tested yet, but what I guarantee has to be there, is that vasopressin and oxytocin has to have some sort of role going on in there. Really interesting. Interesting implication of this. So think about this. If you were pregnant, and assuming this works in mammals other than rodents, and if you were pregnant, so the whole time you were pregnant, what's going on? You're doing this huge job of ripping out, you know, the, the walls and the plumbing in your old factory bulb and like putting in new stuff and it's a total mess. Like you spend your pregnancy with your old factory system totally cockeyed. No wonder stuff smells weird. And no wonder foods taste weird and all of that. There is a whole adaptationist literature out there on why should it be that you suddenly want pickles and these foods you can't stand the taste of and it's to avoid inadvertently eating toxins, a really unconvincing spandrel-filled literature out there, it may be an inadvertent spandrel byproduct of you're ripping apart the whole olfactory system so you're all set to recognize the smell of your kids. You just got screwy olfaction and taste all throughout pregnancy. The main point of this, though, is this is endocrine regulation driving not to make you able to recognize a relative because you've already got the genes in place for that, just making sure that your olfactory bulb is at the very best at that time for doing it. 